joined now by Kurt Schilling. He's uh, at Garrick38 on Twitter. Kurt, appreciate you getting up early with us, my man. Uh, tell up? me what happened with the Hall of Fame. We've been talking about it some on the show. But from your perspective, what's been going on and uh, what decision have you reached? Well, I mean, nothing's been going on. I, I didn't get elected, and uh, I'd been talking with the Hall of Fame over the last couple of days to a week uh, in preparation for last night. And, and I, I want to reiterate how, uh, how gracious they have been, but uh, it's just turned it. I knew we had kind of reached the nexus. My wife and I were talking the night before, and, and I just wanted it over. Um, I'm at a point now where I, I, I don't want to go through this again. This is I made peace with this a long time ago in understanding who was the who who who, who wielded the gavel, who was who was judging. I mean, you're talking about a group of people that are eighty five percent white and ninety percent male. Uh and they're lecturing me on diversity and racism and all of the things that go with that, including I I mean, the ones that know me, the writers that know me know the things they're writing aren't true, yet they still write them. Um, and I realized with, you know, my wife is, is currently in the midst of chemotherapy and battling breast cancer, and it's been a, a challenging couple months, and I dreaded the day. And and I, I saw the hurt that it was causing her. When I mean, we had people in our lives I had, there's a reporter, uh, a guy who works in the media in Philadelphia, who, when I was in Philly and young, I was a friend of, uh, a good friend with. He was in our home. He was a friend of my family. He knows us all. He knows my, knows my kids. And he he uh, made a move this week to get me removed from the Phillies' wall of fame. I mean, the hatred runs deep for President Trump and for conservatives. And and he's a coward, and he's a liar, and, and he's also a guy who... Uh, was not averse to making comments to me when I was younger that would today would get him fired. And he said and did things that we know aren't true. And when I saw the impact it was having on my family, I just realized I don't want this anymore. I don't want to be a part of this. And I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit for not thinking of it sooner. I mean, I've now removed the writers from any possibility of passing judgment on me in a meaningful way for the rest of my life. And, talk- and it actually feels up like uplifting <laughs> how so this is for people out there who are waking up and they're they're not really paying attention right like i mean the baseball hall of fame matters to a certain segment of baseball fans but it kind of right. sneaks up on you it's in january right the voting nobody got voted into the baseball hall of fame and the baseball hall of fame has massive issues with the steroids era and there's a huge debate about what to do with guys like bonds and clemens and all but those I think guys it has a massive issue with the voters i mean yeah. we're looking listen like when when over a third of the voters can vote for 10 players and, and other voters vote for none, there's a huge flaw in the process. When voters can use the character clause uh, at will and, and, and selectively, I mean, guys that, and it was, very, it was made very clear by the people that went public about not voting for me why they didn't, and a lot of it had, you know, some of them lied, some of them said that, well, the, the tweet of me supporting the violence at the Capitol, which is a lie to begin with, uh, is the reason I didn't vote for him. Well, that tweet came out six days after they submitted their votes. So that didn't happen. It's inter- but- right, so let, let's take a step back. Let's just pretend. So the reason I'm setting the table here is let's pretend that Kurt Schilling has never made any political statement ever, right? Let's, right. let's begin with that as the, uh, as the presumption. Are you, in your opinion, in the Hall of Fame yes. if you have never publicly made a single yes. political statement, left or right wing or independent or anything, other than like, hey, I'm Kurt Schilling, I play baseball, Absolutely that's all Absolutely unequivocally on. guaranteed, yes. Absolutely unequivocally guaranteed. Are you in the Hall of Fame if you had been a Bernie bro, if you Absolutely. were a big Obama guy, if you were no a question. big Biden guy, if you had no supported question. left-wing politics, are you yes. in the Hall of Fame? Yes. So the only reason that you are not in the Hall of Fame is because you are, in your opinion, a Donald Trump supporter. Well, well let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, if you're going to judge someone's character, I, I played 22 years. I played with probably well over and against th- a couple thousand players. Um, I have never, ever, and I never will have, a former teammate or competitor of mine 
say that I've ever done or said anything racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, or any of those things. There's no writer that's ever going to come out and tell you that I threatened to lynch them, ever. There's no writer that's ever going to come out and tell you I said or did any of the things that they claim that, that, I'm a, that are part of my character. But they're going to keep me... This goes back to 2004. The, the nexus of all this is the day after we won in 2004 when I came out in support of President Bush, uh, things went... You know, people went apoplectic. Was that, that the first time you ever made anything political yes. of a comment? So in 2004, yes. you come out and you say, I'm a supporter of George W. Bush. Yeah, I don't I said, even make remember. Make sure people go out and vote and vote Bush on Good Morning America the morning after we won the World Series. And, and uh, we, had, we lost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Of because at of that support. time, for people to kind of put that into context, George W. Bush is running against John Kerry, who is a senator from Massachusetts. Right. So you play for the Boston Red Sox in the state right. of Massachusetts. Right. You guys and, finally and the, and the Red Sox ownership made it clear how upset that I was even remotely acting political, and I shouldn't come out and do anything. And the next day, they were flying John Kerry around on John Henry's private jet. <laughs> right. You know, so I mean, the, it's, the hypocrisy is is embarrassing. But the but the fact of the matter is, this is a group of people who voted. Who, who voted for and have a pedophile, uh, a, a man in the in the writers' wing in the Hall of Fame who molested his niece, and after that that went public and everything happened, they voiced their support of him as a writer, and said, "Well, you know, he, he, he's in there because of his writing, not because of quote the other stuff." And that's that's and and these same people again that 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 voiced their displeasure at my, you know, again the things that they claim are 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 just not true. You know, I didn't voice my support for violence at the Capitol. I voiced my support for protest, which this country is built on protesting things you disagree with. But these same people voted for a man who beat his wife. They voted for a man who beat an elderly man. They voted for two guys who cheated, and when caught, they lied to ruin the lives of other people. So, you know, all of this stuff is a maelstrom of, of things that add up to these people being absolutely in no position to judge anybody. For that, some of the, I mean, and here's the other part, Clay. I played 22 years. I traveled for 22 years. I saw these guys in public. I know what they did on the road. I know how they acted on the road. And and you know, alcoholics, adulterers, all of it. That, that there's there's tons of them. Some of the worst human beings I've ever met. For the sad part is, for every amazing to me, an integrity-filled, honorable Jason Stark and Tim Kirkjian. There's a there's a, a a Dan Shaughnessy and and a Hank uh, you know George King and a, and a Mike Missanelli and a, and a you know Michael Felger there there's there's the worst of the worst of the worst of people who for some reason believe that that they're in a place where they can comfortably pass judgment on people who are nowhere near as flawed as they are and use the character if the character clause mattered Jim tell me would have got a hundred percent. The character clause mattered. Dale Murphy would have been in on the first ballot. It didn't matter to those players, and it should have, but it's the only thing that matters in my case. And, you know, so, so again, I'm, I'm stepping away. I've asked the Hall to remove me from the ballot, and if they don't, and I'm sure they will, because if they, uh, if they don't, I won't participate, no matter what the outcome is next year. So, so there's no reason to have me on the ballot. So I can move comfortably to the Veterans Committee, and if the former players believe I'm electable and then and a Hall of Famer, then I guess in a, in a nutshell, it, that's the ultimate way to go. And so this seems to me, regardless of the politics of anybody out there listening, if you are correct, and I think you are, that if you had never made any political comment at all, you would be in the Hall of Fame, and that if you had made supporting left-wing candidates a hallmark of your political commentary that you would be in the hall of fame how can these writers look themselves in the mirror and not just realize that what they are seeking is people who agree with them politically and that if they don't they will excise whatever small measure of power they have against you for, as you say, speaking out in favor of George W. Well, Bush and, and the Republican Party. How, I, Clay, I think you have to ask yourself, how can someone who, who is a coward, how can someone who has no morals or integrity, how can they look themselves in the mirror? I guess they, they have, their, their mirrors are broken. And that, I mean, these are, like most, 86% of the sports media is liberal. And what, 90% of it's white? 
I mean, so so for them to be espousing, you know, lessons on race and diversity is laughable to begin with. But, you know, you have to, you know, yeah, there's a dynamic there that I've I watched unfold for decades, and that is you've got 90% white liberal college males standing in a clubhouse with players of every race and color. Some of them, many of them can't speak the English language properly and, and don't have an eighth grade education in some cases, and they're making $25 million a year, and these guys went to Harvard Ivy League schools, and they're bitter. They're, they're bitter people, and it comes out in the way they write and the way they talk. Um, but again, that, that I'm not, and obviously, I, 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 I hate caveating anything, but in this day and age, it seems like you kind of have to most times. I'm not talking about all of them. There's some really, really amazing human beings and, and huge fans of the game in that mix. But these are people who have turned, much like the mainstream media, they have tried as hard as they can to make themselves a part of the story rather than writing the story. Which is why you have so. And listen, that that gentleman I talked about earlier, the 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 the, the, the pedophile, was Bill Conlon, a Philadelphia writer. He walked in, and it's kind of sad to, to to say, given what's happened, he walked into the locker room the day after the Hall of Fame vote for Nolan Ryan, and he loudly announced the fact that he did not vote for Nolan Ryan because if Don Sutton didn't get a unanimous vote, then Nolan Ryan didn't deserve to either. And I went ballistic. In, in the clubhouse, in front of everybody. Like, who the hell are you, you know? And that was the day I realized, it was forward-looking, and I didn't realize at the time, just how little this matters, their opinion should matter. And, and you know, obviously they vote for the Hall of Fame, so it matters a great deal, but I would argue that there's a mass, there needs to be a massive change in the process. And, and I can recommend a couple things. That yeah, what would you think. recommend? So if you, well, so all, you're listen, a, you played 20 years in baseball, you have, a, like you said, thousands of teammates. Player, how do, if a how player would you change gets 90% it? of the vote, anybody not voting for that player should lose their ballot. Any, any, any writer that votes for a player that only gets one vote should lose their ballot. Right away, you cut, you, you, you cut away the chaff. You cut away the, 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 the frauds. Any, anybody that votes, that, that doesn't vote for a player on a ballot where, you know, a third of the voters have voted for 10 players, which is the maximum, they should lose their ballot. Because every one of them comes with an accompanying article and some sort of moral stance, holier than now, of, you know, I don't believe so-and-so, this, you know, and, and it's not about them. Never has been about them. Do you think that the – and I'm not an expert on the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, but now that the writers have made it pretty clear that they're not going to put you in because of your politics, do you think that you will get in through the veteran side, through player decisions? I have absolutely no idea. And I honestly I, – I, I st- like I said, I've been at peace for this for a long time. But if the players vote me in, if the former players were to vote me in – you know, with bells on, uh, what an honor that would be because their opinions, their valid opinions, right? I mean, listen, I don't know what your depth of sports knowledge is, but I promise you it's better and more articulate and more insightful than probably 50 to 90% of the people that interviewed me at my locker. You know, they, they, they don't, fan, and I think fans have, have caught on in the last couple years to, to decades that, these guys aren't really all that smart. Yeah, they just got the right job. I mean, I, I listen. I, I haven't listened to a, probably thirty seconds of sports radio uh, in locally in Boston since I retired uh, because I realized I, I listened to these guys talk, and the the few of them that had the guts to come in the clubhouse were phonies, and so they're basically these. They're not paid for their sports IQ. They're paid for for their desire or their ability to go outside the box and say something outlandish. Kurt Schilling, I just, I mean, I got to tell you, I, I think it's absolutely, I mean, to me, it's an easy argument to make that if you're going to use the character uh, clause to keep you out of the Hall of Fame, then you should have to use that character uh, flaw. You know, if it's a flaw to have political opinions, it should be content neutral and applied to everybody. 
and frankly, it's not. And the reason you're not going to be in the Hall of Fame, according to the baseball writers, is because your political opinions are different than theirs, which is the the very foundational level of cancel culture. Right. Well, I mean, this is it. I mean, this is the, they are the. And again, I, I can't think, and I hate to say it like this in in, in blanket statement because it's not. Because like I said, for every Tim Kirkchen and and Jason Stark and just quality human being, there are ten dirtbags. And and those the, those people are are given the same task, which just seems wrong. Kurt Schilling, we appreciate the time. I know you got a lot of stuff to get to this morning, but thank you for calling in, my man. Always a pleasure, brother.